Let's head to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for Spurs against Luton. Live and exclusive on TalkSport with double title winner Perry Groves alongside your commentator Alex Crook. Thank you Adrian. Good afternoon everybody. Easter weekend is always such a defining period of the season and Luton's first visit to Tottenham since the early 90s has huge ramifications at both ends of the Premier League table. Victory for the hosts would strengthen their grip on the top five. That should be enough for a Champions League place come May. But if Luton can defy an ever-increasing injury list and pick up a first win in ten games, it would be a major shot in the arm for their hopes of avoiding an instant return to the Championship. Perry Groves is alongside me, and this one really matters. It really matters at both ends of the table, he said there. Crookie, obviously, Spurs want to get themselves, uh, if they can, into the top four, maybe the top five for Champions League positions. And Luton obviously need that win because they're scrapping and fighting not to go down. It was a glorious spring afternoon in North London and it is Tottenham who get us underway for the second of our three live and exclusive Premier League commentaries if it lives up to the first one as Newcastle fought back from 3-1 down to beat West Ham by four goals to three we are in for a treat it's Spurs all in white shooting right to left in this first half who get us underway and straight away they were looking to release Pedro Porro the ball cleared as far as James Madison who came off the bench for England against Belgium at Wembley in midweek and he plays it back into his own half and Romero just a reminder of the two lineups for those of you just tuning in Spurs have Vicario in goal Porro, Romero Dragosin and Udogi the back four Basuma and Saar in front of them Kulusevski, Madison and Werner are behind Son in attack and for Luton Town Kaminsky the goalkeeper the back three as usual although a makeshift one of Kabore, Burke and Mengi and you're just uh, pointing to me, Perry, because we were unsure who the right wing back would be. Alfie Doughty, the left wing back. We're well, just looking at Luton, Crookie, and I think they've actually gone with a, a flat back four. It just looks like is going to be a right back with Burke and Menge the centre halves. And then Alfie Doughty is the, the orthodox left back. And it's That's stuff. unusual, isn't it? Yeah, very. I, I didn't think that, obviously, Rob Edwards would change it because he normally plays like a five at the back. And just looking in free play. Burke, who's playing at centre-half on the right-hand side for Luton, every time James Madison drops a little bit deep, he's the one who's been told to follow him all the way in. So he's going to be going man-to-man, but then that leaves a massive gap in behind him. So it's, then you've got to make sure that Kabore then just slides across and gets himself alongside Mendy. So it's almost uh, a 4-5-1, the five in midfield, Chong and Panzu, Barkley, Berry and Townsend, and Carlton Morris is the lone striker. They were practising in the warm-up as a back three as Spurs look to get in behind right from the off here. Kulosevsky into the penalty area. We cut it back behind, perhaps. Uh, and that just took some momentum out of the attack. And then Son has had his pocket picked by Andros Townsend. And the former Tottenham man races into the home half of the field. Gets away from Basuma. Tries to cut it back. Good ball as well. Into Ross Barkley inside the penalty area. Chance for Chong. And Luton Town score. Tahi Chong inside three minutes. What a counter-attack from the Hatters, whose travelling fans are all on their feet over on the far side. It was an unerring finish from Chong, low into the bottom left-hand corner. Well, who saw that coming? Tottenham nil, Luton Town one. Just looking at the Tottenham Hotspur players, Crooked, they're all in a daze because it was a fantastic counter-attack from Luton down their right-hand side. Andros Townsend picked the ball up on this right-hand side. He did his archetypal foot over, so he puts his foot over the ball, goes on the outside, and then gets to the byline and thinks, can he pick the right pass? Exactly what he does, he cuts it back to Ross Barkley. I thought Ross Barkley was going to shoot Crookie, because as he took his touch, it just set up, and then I thought he was going to volley it, but then he composed himself, took a touch, and then just had a look over his left shoulder, and just squared it to Tahif Chong. His first touch was fantastic. His second touch was even better with his left foot. He's actually smashed it just as it's set up. And he's given Vicaro absolutely no chance in the Tottenham Hotspur goal with his left foot across him to put Luton 1-0 up here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Spurs looking for an immediate reply. Madison down by the left corner flag. Tottenham nil, Luton 1 on Talk Sport. Is it going to be one of those days of shocks and surprises, you wonder? Not even those travelling Luton fans would have expected a quick-fire start like that from the visitors. 
No wins in their last nine. So many goals conceded, particularly on their travels. So many players on the injured list. But as they've done all season, the Hatters showing grit, determination and character. It's going to be a long 86 minutes. What well, Crookie, we was talking before the game about Luton give you 100%, but they're always a goal threat. And that's the 17th Premier League game on the trot that they've scored. So you'd think that Tottenham would be a bit wary of that. They weren't. They just committed too many men forward. And every Luton player was involved in that breakaway goal from Townsend to Barkley. Chong made the right decision at the right time. Top quality. And the last three times that I've been here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for talk sport against Brighton, Wolves and Palace, Spurs have gone 1-0 down in all of those games. They did it against Brentford as well. Came back to win in the second half. In fact, they've taken 18 points from losing positions this season. I'm sure Rob Edwards is already out on the edge of his technical area. The Luton manager will be well aware of that. Ange Postacoglu just looking a bit forlorn early on. Hangs his head. Luton finding the back of the net with their first attack. And Batahi Chong It's now three goals in his last five games for the former Manchester United man. Spurs nil, Luton one. Here come Tottenham again though. Werner looking for the run of Son. Force wide there by Kabore. Keeps possession though, the Tottenham captain and rolls the ball back for Werner. Werner to the byline, deep cross, aimed in at the far post and perhaps are climbing above Mengi but couldn't really get enough purchase on the header. And in the end, it's Tamey behind for a goal kick for the Hatters who lead 1-0. Yeah, it was decent play from Timo Werner on this left-hand side. Just gets himself to the byline. He's got to stand it up. Said Papsar just rises above Mengi at the far post, heads it down, but can't get it on target. You are listening to Tottenham against Luton on Talk Sport with now. Don't forget that with now, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Aston Villa against Wolves and Brentford against Manchester United live today, contract-free. With a Now Sports membership, just search Now Sports. Tottenham searching for a way back into this game. Werner with a slaloming run away from Townsend. Pokes the ball into the penalty area. And that's brave goalkeeping from Kaminsky to get there ahead of Kuliskevsky, who was bearing down on him. I think he's taken a kick for his trouble, Kaminsky, and looks at a bit of discomfort. Good goalkeeping, Perry Grove. Yeah, it was a good starting position from Kaminsky because he said it was a slaloming run there from Timo Werner cutting in from this left hand side then Kudusevsky coming in from the right hand side it's one of those ones where there's a coming together to be fair to Mpanzu he followed the run of Kudusevsky and then it's really brave goalkeeping and Kudusevsky just tumbles in over the top of Kaminsky obviously the uh, Luton physio has come on I don't think I think it was more that on the follow through Kudusevsky caught his feet with his hands rather than on Kaminsky's head so hopefully it's not going to be a head injury and there has been an early goal over in Scotland Aberdeen lead at Ross County by a goal to nil Aberdeen of course no longer under the stewardship of Neil Warnock nil nil in the other four Premier League games that got underway at the same time as we did Forest against Palace big game for the host of the City ground Everton go to Bournemouth Chelsea take on Burnley and it's Sheffield United against Fulham and a reminder coming up later tonight 8 o'clock kickoff live and exclusive on Talk Sport we'll have Brentford against Manchester United Manchester United might just be buoyed by events here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium Spurs not yet out of sight from Eric Ten Hag's side and they trail by a goal to nil we've played 8 minutes well Postacoglu came out before the players come out so he was mentally ready to go and he knows I said before that Spurs really start slowly here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and said the last three games I've watched them and just looking and the goal for Luton is Bissouma who tracks Andros Townsend but Andros Townsend just goes past him far too easily and the two uh, Fulham's goals where Spurs didn't uh, defend the ball very well from wide area is exactly what happened here today Great composure by Chong though with the finish sometimes when you find yourself in that position particularly away from home when you are the underdog you can rush the shot he composed himself and Vicario had no chance yeah well what he did obviously the ball set up and it made his mind up for him but what was impressive is that Luton committed so many men forward they had four men in the box on the breakaway so you can say that Rob Edwards had said to his Luton town side when you're in possession you know I want you to be aggressive and it's just really interesting with the way they've set up because Mpanzu it looks like he's just going to go man to man on Papsar Ross Barkley's going to go man to man on Basuma as Spurs try and play out from the back I said before, Reese Burke is just following all the way in on James Madison. 
Madison in possession deep inside his own half and he did have Burke in close proximity. Burke racing back now to rejoin the Luton back line as it's cleared away by Doughty. Only as far as Pedro Porro initially. Now recycled back to round about the halfway line and the yellow booted Christian Romero. He felt the wrath of Ange Postacoglu this week for daring to suggest that he might want to play for Argentina at the Olympics in the summer. Here's Madison inside the centre circle for Spurs. 1-0 down at home here against the Luton side in no form at all coming into this one. In fact, their bottom of the Premier League form table over the last seven matches, the Hatters. Here's Romero. Everybody in black for Luton, camped inside their own half of the field away to our left. Romero slowly tiptoeing forward for Spurs. Not too much movement ahead of him, so he goes short for Batsuma and then laid off by Pedro Porro to Madison. Back to Porro. And now a chance maybe for Kulisevsky to get across him from the far side. Instead again, he plays it back to Pedro Porro. Now all the way back from Romero. Patient build up this from Tottenham, but they are keeping the ball well. Luton keeping their shape in front of the 18-yard line. And he's back now with Radu Dragasin. I think it's fair to say he's still finding his feet in the Premier League. The Romanian international. Son has made a good run over on the right-hand side. He's got four white shirts in the centre one is Kulusevsky just tries to help it into a dangerous position and there's Andros Townsend left footed to smash it into the Luton fans and out for a throw over on the far touchline 1-0 Luton Town lead here and you said there Spurs patient with their passing it's all in front of Luton at the moment a little bit lateral but good link up play from Son and Kulusevsky on that right hand side Kulusevsky going on the underlap trying to get his cross in blocked at near post corner for Spurs over on their right corner that Pedro Porro will take first of the game for Tottenham right footed from that right hand side oh, Romero got a run at it but just seemed to lose the flight of the ball and an opportunity now for Kabore to get it away, blocked by Basuma here's Son just outside the penalty area into Kulusevsky, can't find Werner maybe a case of one pass too many there for Tottenham and again the Luton defence clear the danger as Dundee go a goal up at St Johnston over in Scotland Tottenham have a throw just inside Luton territory the problem Luton have obviously when they're defending they bring everybody back so that when they do clear the ball and it's Kabore that time they've got nothing to play off so then he has to cut inside he gets closed down possession goes back to Spurs I don't get these managers quickly sometimes you know, leave, a, leave a player up front that means the opposition have to leave two at the back at least anyway here's Udogi darting forward for Tottenham down the left hand side really well defended by Mengi clears it away and then it was intelligent play by Burke played the clearance against Werner behind for a goal kick we've had the first goal in the Premier League this afternoon it's come at the city ground here's Jeff Peters it's Nottingham Forest 1 Crystal Palace nil. Jean-Philippe Mateta with a really calm finish lovely ball from Lerma into Eza touched it on to Mateta and what a finish Palace lead Forest 1-0 and that, of course, will be music to the ears of the travelling Luton fans. Luton above Forest at the start of play. They're leading by a goal to nil. And Nuno Espirito Santo's men find themselves behind early on. Goal for Hearts as well. They lead Kilmarnock 1-0 in the SPL. You're listening to Talk Sport on this busy Saturday in the Premier League. No EFL action, of course, because we had a full fixture list on Good Friday. We'll have it once again on Monday, including full commentary of... Ipswich against Southampton Ipswich top of the championship after they won yesterday and all their rivals at the top of the table slipped up we'll also have a full around the ground service on Monday Adrian Durham will be alongside me at the Hawthorns West Bromwich Albion trying to cement themselves in the playoffs what have you made Perry Groves of the opening 14 minutes here Luton one up yeah at the moment Rob Edwards obviously has got his team set up crookie is the 4-5-1 the and sometimes it's actually a 4-6 with a, a flat 6 when Spurs are in possession and when you see Spurs play obviously they like having the inverted full back so Dory goes in and plays at um, inside left and Pedro Pro comes in at inside right and I think sometimes from their point of view Spurs congest their play a little bit too much and I've said before that that doesn't give James Madison any space to play in and we've seen here James Madison has dropped right onto the edge of his own 18 yard box Reese Burke has followed him all the way in yeah, Luton pressing high and making it difficult for Tottenham to play out from the back. They do have a throw Spurs around about the 
midway, midway point of their own half. Tottenham four points better off at this stage this season than they were last. Victory here would take them level on points with Aston Villa ahead of Villa taking on Wolves later. But they're going to have to do it from behind as Werner is set three down the left into the penalty area. Great freak from Werner! And then he guides the shot wide. Well, he did the hard work, Timo Werner, after a quite brilliant crossfield pass, I think, from Pedro Porro. He got away from the Luton defence, one-on-one with the goalkeeper, and as so often over the course of Timo Werner's career, he just couldn't pick out the back of the net. Yeah, Spurs worked it really well from the right-back position with their throwing. Good interplay with Son and Kulusevski. Kulusevski just whips it out to the left wing with his left foot. And if one thing you could actually say encapsulates Timo Werner, Cookie, that is actually it. He does brilliantly to go on the outside of Kabore. Then you think all he's got to do with his left foot is show a bit of composure and slide it past Kaminsky. He misses the target completely. You've got to hit the target and make the goalkeeper worst ways out make a save. And I think in fairness to Kaminsky, he knew it was going wide because he pulled his glove out of the way at the last minute. So he had his angles absolutely spot on there, the Belgian. And a big opportunity for Tottenham to get back on level terms goes begging. They've conceded a free kick here as well. Madison penalised for a foul on the Hatter's captain, Morris. Talking about gloves, Crookie. <laughs> Go on. You've been Madison, waiting to get this out. It's taken Madison, 16 minutes. No, Madison and Werner, actually, they've got themselves out a little bit of trouble because in the warm-up, they were wearing gloves. I don't know if anybody's told them that we're actually officially spring now, aren't we? Are we going forward later on tonight? We are. We lose an hour right. of sleep. Don't forget that. You're on the Sunday session tomorrow. Don't turn up late. I'm always there. I'll probably sleep there tonight just in case, <laughs> just to make sure. What a Sunday session it'll be as well. Adrian Durham hosting the show from the Etihad, where Perry Groves is convinced that Arsenal will beat Manchester City. Stay tuned to Talk Sport <laughs> to find out if that happens. You asked me if I take a draw, and I said absolutely no chance. We're going there to win. I bet you would. No, I wouldn't. Free kick here for Luton. Alfie Doughty, who is normally so lethal from the set piece situation seven assists in the Premier League already this season dinks it towards the far post it's knotted down by Morris and a clever run from Burke who got the wrong side of the Tottenham defence he just plays it back out to Andros Townsend on that far side and Townsend's found Burke again Burke with the delivery towards the near post on Morris almost got there in the end it's just stabbed behind by Madison for a Luton corner and Morris is still holding his head I think he feels like maybe, with a little bit more commitment, that could have been 2-0 for Luton. Well, that was like Houdini from Luton over on their left-hand side, the escapologist, because Andros Townsend shouldn't be allowed to get out of that left-hand corner, and he just rolls it square to Rhys Burke. He said, there, he's a great little ball into the near post. And Morris gets himself across the near post. I think he should be taking his left foot. He's opened his body out. That gave the dog a chance to get the block in, corner for Luton over on their left-hand side. 18 minutes play, Tottenham nil, Luton 1 is the score on the giant TV screen behind the goal. Doughty with a delivery, looping one towards the far post, not one of his best, and Tottenham able to counter. Kulusevski releasing the fleet-footed Werner, good challenge by Kabore sliding in, concedes the throw, and he needed to make that tackle just to allow Luton to get players back behind the ball. Let's head very quickly to the vitality. What's been happening in the early stages? Ian Abrahams. 18 gone, Bournemouth nil, Everton nil, Lewis Cook blasted over a chance for Bournemouth early on. Derek Calvert-Lewin had a shot deflected over for Everton. It's Bournemouth nil, Everton nil. Tottenham in possession just outside the Luton penalty area. They trail by a goal to nil on Talk Sport. They play the ball back to Romero. Luton players content to let him have possession. 20 yards inside the Hatters half. You can hear groans of frustration from the Spurs fans that they're not getting the ball forward quickly enough. Pedro Porro back to Dragusin. He's got Werner to his left, comes infield and then plays it against Presuma. It's a bit fortunate there, Dragusin, that the loose ball fell straight back to his feet. Here's Pedro Porro looking to take on the Luton goal scorer Chong. Picks out Saar. Now Son just inside the D. Runs into a crowd of Luton defenders. And they're going to look to counter again here. It's a clever layoff from Barkley to his fellow veteran Townsend. He's been shoved over by Udogi. And Luton have a free kick just inside their half of the field. 
Uh, Chelsea up against Burnley at Stamford Bridge. How's that one started? Ollie Clink. Chelsea nil, Burnley nil, 19 on the clock. How are Chelsea not 1 0 up crooked? Nicholas Jackson slipped in brilliantly by Cole Palmer, but Murich came to the rescue with a smart save. Both teams have started brightly here at a sunny Stamford Bridge. It's still Chelsea nil, Burnley nil. Here's Son for Spurs, rounds the goalkeeper Kaminsky, and he's hit both posts. How on earth did that stay out? Werner with a follow up, blocked by Kabore, and then Sarge shot, cleared on the line by Mengi. My word, I'm not sure how top them aren't on level terms. They're still piling forward here, the white shirt. Sauer into the penalty area, can't get it out from under his feet, and Chong will run it clear and leaves Pedro Porro on the floor in the process. What about that last passage of play, Berry? Son rounded the goalkeeper. He shoots against the inside of the left post. It rolls all the way the ball across the goal line, comes back out off the right post. Brilliant block for the initial follow up and then a goal line clearance to keep Luton in front. Where well, it's just Luton trying to play out from the back. You said there, Kaminsky uh, just comes out, tries to close down Son. Son goes round him, should put it into an empty net, hits the inside of the near post then rolls across the line it's the inside of the far post and it comes out to Saar he should be blasting it into an empty net as well and then all of a sudden I think it was Mengu comes back gets himself on the goal line hits his knees gets cleared never a dull moment at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium first 21 minutes has absolutely flown by here on Talk Sport Luton still leading by a goal to nil and their goal leading a bit of a charm life as Udogi gives away another free kick and there's been a goal at Stamford Bridge Ollie Clink 20 minutes gone Chelsea 1 Burnley 0 Chelsea with the breakthrough short corner the ball whipped in brilliantly by Mudrick and there was Axel Dizazi to plant a header into the net and the Blues are in front Chelsea 1 Burnley 0 off to Bramall Lane very shortly full of the visitors Sheffield United looking to keep alive their fading hopes of staying up Alan Biggs usually takes an abacus when he goes to Bramall Lane what's happening there Alan? Believe it or not Alex Sheffield United nil Fulham nil uh, if Sheffield United lose it's more about how they lose today after conceding 21 in four games here so far so good for them no sign of Fulham filling their boots yet Sheffield United nil Fulham nil St Mirren have taken the lead at Motherwell in the SPL still goalless between Rangers and Hibernian 19 minutes gone there Here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, this fabulous arena. Well, there are some pretty ashen-faced home supporters. Tottenham behind, as they have been since the third minute. Tahit Chong rounding off an excellent counter-attack move. Rob Edwards down there, kicking every ball. He knows what a significant day, potentially, this could be for Luton Town particularly with Forrester go down at home to Palace Mateta has put the Eagles in front as we heard from Jeff Peters there is a, a VAR review by the way at Stamford Bridge we'll let you know if that goal stands Chelsea thought they were 1-0 up against Burnley as Vicario fresh from his Italian debut during the international break slowly brings the ball out of the Tottenham penalty area away to our right bit of a cloud overhead here in North London as Rangers do go in front against Hibernian Rangers 1 Hibs nil. here's Pap Sar driving into the penalty area looked to pick out Kulusevski at the far post he didn't really have too many options and now Luton will again look to counter back to Stamford Bridge very shortly here's Morris dropping deep the number 9 for Luton Town rolling the ball into Luke Berry now it's out in the right back position with Kabore Townsend who played such an integral part in the goal that separates these two teams using all of his Premier League experience let's Luton play it back to Kaminsky inside the area let's find out from Ollie Klink if that Chelsea goal has indeed been ruled out. It has been ruled out, Brookie. Chelsea nil, Burnley nil, and I think that Chelsea will feel very aggrieved. It's ruled out for handball, but it looked to me as Conor Gallagher takes a shot, it looked to me as if it either came off Dizazi's head or his shoulder. If it is his arm, it's the very top of his arm. He's also being dragged down by the Burnley defender. So if it's not a goal, it's surely a penalty as well. I'm sure Maurizio Pochettino will have a lot to say about it. Still Chelsea nil, Burnley nil. A 1-0 Luton lead here at Spurs ball into the Luton penalty area whacked upfield by Mpanzu 
And picked up by Vicario, all in light blue. The Spurs goalkeeper, just two clean sheets now in his last 20 Perry in the Premier League. That is an issue for Spurs, isn't it? For all the plaudits that Ange Postacoglu gets for his attacking football, they simply aren't good enough defensively at this moment in time. Yeah, well, they've conceded in the last 12 Premier League games on the trot, so Vicario can keep a clean sheet, can't he, for Italy with his debut against Ecuador. Goes in goal for Spurs, he concedes within the first five minutes. But normally with Spurs, it's because they're keeping a the high line. This time, Tahith Chong's goal was because it was a brilliant counter-attack. And saying it's just Pesuma not defending properly in the wide areas. You could hear just a little bit of frustration, couldn't you, Crookie, from the Spurs fans because they've had a lot of possession, but there's instances where 21 players are within the width of the 18-yard box because what happens is Werner comes in from the left-hand side, Kudusevsky comes in from the right-hand side, and you could just hear the frustration because Spurs lead need more width because it's very contested from Luton say they're getting back into their their team shape when Spurs are in good possession and then you just end up running into a load of bodies Vicario has gone long upfield this time but it's easily dealt with by Reese Burke at the heart of that Luton defence now Chong being forced back towards his own penalty area by Pedro Porro but he's done well to carry the ball forward Tahit Chong and surely then was rugby tackled to the ground by Porro will be a free kick just in from that far touchline still inside the Luton half away to our left joint fewest wins most defeats most goals conceded at this stage of a top flight season Luton Town but still very much in with a chance of survival they only spent £17 million in the summer I think if Rob Edwards does manage to keep them in the top flight he has to be talked about potentially as a manager of the year contender and they are 26 minutes into this one. They lead by a goal to nil. That Rangers goal, by the way, uh, disallowed. They've also missed a penalty, James Tavernier. So it's still nil nil. Rangers nil, Hibs nil. Earlier today, we brought you a barnstorming game from the northeast. Newcastle 3 1 down at one stage, came back to beat West Ham by four goals to three. And as we've been hearing, the only other goal in the three o'clock kickoffs in the Premier League so far this afternoon has come at the City Ground. Forest nil, Palace one. Jean Philippe Mateta, the scorer. Do you think it'd be fair to say it's not really going for Calvin Phillips <laughs> at this particular time? Well, well, listening to Adam and Dean on commentary, it sounded like he was maybe a little bit harshly done by. But I think West Ham fans calling talk sport over the weekend might just point to that change that David Moyes made took off Antonio bringing on Phillips they were free when up they've lost the game and he gives away the penalty there. as reasons that maybe they want to see a change here's Son Tottenham fans certainly hoping to see a change here this afternoon but that's ball from Son he had Madison and Werner to aim at to his left he completely overcooked the pass and it's behind for a goal kick that Thomas Kaminsky is in no hurry at all to take the Luton keeper well it was a good play initially from Son because he's just dropped a a bit deeper and gone in the James Madison position. James Madison's become the furthest man forward and all Son's got to do is roll it to him and he's actually, well, he had diver's boots on there because actually he's pinged it and he just pinged it out of play. Still plenty more live football to come for you on the TalkSport Network this weekend. Eight o'clock tonight, we're at the GTEC Community Stadium, Brentford against Manchester United. Tomorrow we've got the uh, Women's Continental League Cup final live from Molyneux Arsenal against Chelsea. That's a three o'clock kick up on Talk Sport 2 and a plethora of championship action on Easter Monday. Leicester Norwich 12.30 is live and exclusive on Talk Sport 2. Followed at three o'clock by Stoke Huddersfield at 5.30 on Talk Sport. Ipswich take on Southampton. Here's Madison running towards the Luton penalty area who doggy crosses it all the way along the six yard line and Tahit Chong just slows down to a walking pace and regains possession for Luton but they've given it away on the edge of the area and it's Mengi who has to come in and volley clear we've also got Leeds Hull in the championship 8 o'clock on Monday night in fact we've got 50 live commentaries for you across the TalkSport network in the month of April as Rangers do now lead by a goal to nil against Tibernian and Tavernier has made amends for his earlier penalty miss he's put Rangers in front there Aberdeen one Ross County one Ross County have equalised at Pitodri doesn't score enough goals does he Tavernier for Rangers <laughs> from right back there was a great stat about him Adrian Durham if he's listening and I'm sure he is uh, hosting the, the programme from the city ground is, is he one of the top English goal scorers since the turn of the century I might be making that up Adrian will probably correct me I'm sure but certainly there's, a, tavern- there's a Tavernier stat 
that Adrian uh, set as a bit of a quiz question a few weeks ago. Cookie, don't doubt yourself. You talk yourself out of it. <laughs> Didn't quite commit to that one. Certainly can't accuse Luton of a lack of commitment here. They lead 1-0. We've only got 15 minutes of the first half to play. Dragerson carries the ball deep into the Luton half and rolls it out to Werner, the German. Low cross blocked by Gabore. It's been a good battle between those two, actually. Down the Luton right-hand side at the moment, Gabore's holding his own. Yeah, you'd say that in that 1v1 battle, as you say, it's a really good one because Gabore's very quick and Werner wants to go on the outside of him. To be fair, Timo Werner should have put Spurs level at 1-1 when he did go on the outside of him and he should have rolled it past Kaminsky and didn't hit the target ball chipped forward by Pedro Porro but easily collected by Kaminsky he's made more saves this season than any other goalkeeper in the Premier League the summer signing from Blackburn Rovers that's the type of department store that Luton have been shopping in having to pick up some bargain buys Tahit John the goal scorer cost £4 million from Birmingham City he looks at home in the Premier League and he's attacking over on the far side now Chong you're 100% sure the with the Kaminsky is that 100%? I'm 100%, 100% with that one like I'll it. give you that one we always again like from Luton obviously I I hope that they stay up you said they've only spent £17 million pounds. they've done it the, the right whole way the whole club is together there's a brilliant spirit that Rob Edwards has sort of installed and Rob Edwards I think is a, is a very very good coach because he looked at this set of Luton players and he thought this is the way that we're going to play I know he's changed it today obviously gone with a flat back four they normally play the five well, that have caught Tottenham by surprise, especially as they were warming up as a back three. Was that maybe a little bit of uh, poker play from Luton? Well, it caught us by surprise, for it be fair, didn't we? Because we thought that Rhys Burke was going to play in the centre of the three with Kabora on the right and Mengi on the left. But it's, it's interesting as well because, as I said before, they've, they've gone man to man. So when James Madison plays in the 10, Rhys Burke has gone all the way out and followed him. Then Barkley has got himself onto Basuma. And then Mpanzu goes on to Papsar. But what happens there is, when they've gone man-to-man, if they don't engage the player and win the ball back, Luton lose their shape completely. And that's why Spurs have got in a couple of times, especially when Son hit both posts again when he should score. It's Perry Gross, former title winner with Arsenal. Alongside me, Alex Crook, here on Talk Sport 2. 32 minutes on the clock, Tottenham nil, Luton 1. On this busy Premier League Saturday... Eight top flight games on this Saturday afternoon. Three of them live and exclusive on Talk Sport. This is the second of those. Brentford against Manchester United still to come. There's a doggy attacks down the Tottenham left. He's into the penalty area, but he was well shackled by Berry. I think the doggy was content to settle for the corner, but in the end, Cabore made sure it didn't even go out of play. Here come Tottenham again on the left. Madison. Stands up the cross, flicked on by Kulusevski. Maybe flicked away from Pedro Porro, who was coming in behind him. And here come Luton, looking to take advantage of the fact that both Tottenham fullbacks at that stage were out of position. Here's Townsend, who doggy's got back now. And he's trying to cover the run of Townsend. Townsend crosses left-footed towards Morris. It was an awkward header away, off balance from Dragusin, but he got it clear. And then Son rolls away from the challenge of Burke, and very quickly gobbles up the green grass and he finds himself on the edge of the area Son to Madison can he get a shot away here James Madison checks back to the left hand side and Werner Werner in the area oh who was he looking for there he's passed it straight to Ross Barkley and again you can hear what the Tottenham fans thought about that and then Chong's been bundled over on the edge of the area by Kulusevski it'll be a Luton free kick let's get back to the city ground any sign of a Nottingham Forest fight back Jeff Peters not yet, Palace still leading 1-0 through that Jean-Philippe Mateta goal in the 11th minute. Sangaria swept one over the bar for Forrest, but they're just taking too much time in the final third. Forrest nil, Palace 1. And it's currently Tottenham nil, Luton 1. For the latest odds, head to Betfair, the official betting partner of TalkSport's Premier League coverage. But right now you can get Spurs to win at 6-10. The draw is 7-2. Luton to hold on for the victory is available at 18-5. Don't forget, Betfair are paying out winning bets at 90 minutes with 90-minute payout. Applies to match odds, 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. That's all thanks to Betfair, 18+. plus. BeGambleAware.org. Basuma finds Madison on the halfway line. Tottenham running out of time in this first half to get themselves level. They trail by a goal to another, have done since the third minute. Tahit Chong, the goal scorer for Luton Town. Here's Pedro Porro, 10 yards outside the box. Level with the left corner as we look high up 
here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and again they give it away tamely and again you can hear the jeers from many in the home sections of the ground here's Ross Barkley in a bit of space to carry it forward but Rob Edwards urging him to play it back into Luton territory just to keep possession so let's check in at Stamford Bridge at Ollie Klink Chelsea nil, Burnley nil, great chance for Mudrick just now, Crookie Jackson cut it back for him inside the box, but his shot was straight at Muric, Chelsea just struggling to break Burnley down at the moment, and sometimes the tights have been getting forward themselves as well, but with half an hour gone, it's still Chelsea nil, Burnley nil. Everton looking to avoid an unwanted club record for their longest sequence without a victory there at Bournemouth this afternoon, so is Ian Abrahams. Just over 10 to the break, Bournemouth nil, Everton nil, two good chances, first Dominic Calvert-Lewin shot saved by Neto diving low to his left-hand side, and we've just seen Dwight McNeil from the edge of the area fire just wide of the Cherries goal. It's Bournemouth nil, Everton nil. And Alan Biggs is watching Sheffield United against Fulham. Yeah, Sheffield United nil, Fulham nil. Frankly, Alex, it's boring. Uh, not a clear chance at either end, but boring is good as far as the Blades are concerned after what's gone before. Sheffield United nil, Fulham nil. Around about ten minutes of the first half remaining in all of those three o'clock Premier League kickoffs. Luton here looking for only their third away win of the season. And they picked up valuable victories at Everton and Sheffield United but this would be a real statement result as Barkley picks the pocket of Dragosin one back by Basuma and then Madison trying to hold off the attentions of Rhys Burke who just got a little bit too handy and it will be a free kick and a yellow card for Rhys Burke as well Perry Grove yeah just got a little bit too tight we said there just again following him going man to man Madison did really well because it was a high and he just headed it past Rhys Burke got him spun and Reese Burke has panicked and dragged him back. And quite rightly, Jarrod Gillett, the referee, has dished out the uh, first yellow card. Tottenham have played the free kick out to their right hand side, but it's back now on the halfway line with the Argentine Romero. Werner's got acres of space on this near touchline if they choose to use him. Dragosin plays it forward to the RB Leipzig Loney. Told us on Talk Sport a few weeks ago, Werner, that he'd like to make that loan move permanent. I think the jury is probably still out. Here's Saar. Room to turn on the edge of the pedal. Jerry spotted the run of Son. Well defended by a combination there of Doughty and Burt. They just crowded out Son. And he had to fire Tamey in the end at Kaminsky. It was really brilliant play from Rhys Burke because Son looked like he got the wrong side of Rhys Burke. And then Alfie Doughty just come across and he just, with his left foot, he just toe poked it away from Son. Alfie Doughty's been really impressive in this first half. He's used to playing as a wing back today, he's playing as the orthodox left back. He's very, very good in possession. He's very cool. And so far, he's made sure that when they come out of their shape, that he then just slides across and becomes the left-sided centre-half. It's almost a back five, actually, when Spurs are in possession because Chong drops very deep, the goal scorer for Luton Town. Here's Werner, level with the 18-yard line, five yards in from the near touch line. Back to Eve Basuma, who was sent off when these two met at Kenilworth Road earlier in the season. Tottenham coming out 1-0 victors on that occasion Van der Ven on the bench this afternoon with the goal here's Werner chance to try and take on Townsend deep cross to the far post good header away by Doughty but only as far as Pedro Porro two yards outside the box Romero being urged to shoot by the Tottenham fans instead he plays it out to Kulosevsky and Kulosevsky lays it off to Son on the edge of the area Son with a left footed shot deflected and deflected behind for Tottenham's second corner of this first half Luton leading by a goal to nil yeah patient build up from Spurs over on their right hand side Kulishevsky is coming inside just rolls it into Son Son gets it onto his left foot gets his shot, shot away to be fair to Tai Chong he's made sure he's gone and blocked the shot gets deflected corner for Spurs on their left hand side corner taken short Madison to Pedro Porro here's Brasuma just outside the area stands up across to the far post but wasn't the best of deliveries and Dragosin penalised for a foul he just wasn't going to get on the end of it was he without impeding the Luton defender it was Luke Berry who won the free kick inside his own box Spurs nil Luton won elsewhere in the Premier League Forest nil Palace won and still goalless in the games at Bournemouth, Chelsea and Sheffield United earlier today live and exclusive to National Radio on Talk Sport it finished Newcastle 4 West Ham 3 after a humdinger at St James's Park big victory for Eddie Howe 
Newcastle coming back from 3-1 down. David Pleat, of course, very closely associated with both these clubs watching on from the posh seats. I think he was Luton Town's manager the last time that Luton actually beat Spurs in 1985. 1987, Ian Allenson scored two goals. Oh, it's Colts United. You and I him both, him. of course. I was, I was, he's a, I was Ian's apprentice, so he left Colts United and I thought, well, if he can do it, so can I. And he didn't have a long throw, so I thought I'd half a chance. That was the last time Luton beat Spurs in the league. We should mention they've probably not been in the same division too often since then. And this is their first top flight forage into Tottenham territory since 1991. So before the Premier League had even come into being. What a result it would be for Rob Edwards, particularly with Forrest. A goal down at home to Palace. This could be a really significant afternoon in the battle for Premier League survival. Long way to go, but they're within five minutes of getting back to the sanctuary, the dressing room, with a half-time lead, Luton Town. Madison playing the ball down the right-hand side to Pedro Porro. Early delivery into the area is swept away by Mengi. You have to admire Perry Groves, the, the work rate and the organisation that Luton, with all their absentees, have shown so far today. Yeah, very much. But this is all about now, not just their, their fitness levels, but obviously their, their concentration levels as well. Because obviously Rob Edwards has sent his team out with specific instructions, as I mentioned before, about being man-to-man. So you've got to make sure that you don't, when you're man-to-man, get dragged into strange areas. And James Madison, you can just tell he's just getting a little bit frustrated, just demanding the ball for his Spurs teammates not moving the ball quick enough he's trying to play in that little pocket in that 10 position again he's just had a massive shout there at Pedro Porro because he wants it rolled in and Madison is actually demonstrating to Pedro Porro exactly what he wants to do him to do how he wants him to kick the ball and when he wants him to pass it so apart from that he's not given enough information <laughs> Ange Postacoglu's been there he's subdued isn't he hands in pockets the big Australian Right on the edge of his technical area. And that dark black suit, pressed white shirt, black tie. He's been here before with Spurs this season, particularly at home. And they made a habit of going in behind at half time and coming out in the early stage of the second half and taking the game away from their opponents. In fact, they've scored 14 goals in the first 15 minutes after half time. That's more than anybody else in the Premier League so that could be quite a key part of the game this afternoon if Luton are indeed in front at the break Chong wants a free kick for a foul by Basuma the referee Jared Gillett has given it and then there was a bit of a coming together involving Dragusin and Luke Berry Luke Berry was up against Dragusin and he pushed him and then he thought I hope someone else comes in and <laughs> saves me the exactly yeah. and then when Panzu came in he thought oh, thank God for that someone's coming in and saved me <laughs> There's a penalty and a red card at Stamford Bridge. Oli Klink. Three minutes before the break. Chelsea nil, Burnley nil. Penalty to Chelsea and a disaster for Burnley as well. Lorenz Assignon has been sent off. He felled Mudrick inside the box. And as I speak, Rookie, Vincent Company has also been sent off by Darren England. Shown a red card, the Burnley manager, for protesting about the decision. Burnley have made a bright start in this game. Now their manager will have to sit in the stands and Assignon will have to take an early bath. Two yellow cards for Assignon as well. A second yellow within the first half and we'll have a bit of a wait here for Cole Palmer to take this penalty for Chelsea. So back to Ollie Klink. There is shortly free kick here for Luton Town. Doughty scoops it to the right corner of the penalty area, headed away uh, by Basuma for a throw. That would be more bad news for Burnley. If they were to fall behind there, they'll be eight points behind Luton, assuming results stay as they are. And that will pretty much confirm the Clarets return to the championship. As it stands, Luton are going four points clear of Forest. Townsend with a deep cross the far post Doughty's volley blocked behind for a corner let's get back to Oli Klink it's still Chelsea nil, Burnley nil. we're awaiting this penalty from Cole Palmer Vincent Company still in conversation with the fourth official he's so unhappy with his red card and the red card for his player Lorenz Assignon not happy with the penalty it looked fairly soft I have to say but we wait for Cole Palmer to take this penalty 
It's Palmer up against Mirich, left footed, and he dinks it straight down the middle. And Chelsea have the lead. Two minutes to go till half time. Chelsea won, Burnley nil. And a really good chance here for Luton to double their lead from the corner. Luke Berry, well, he's just been questioning his lack of height. He rose above everybody in the Tottenham defence and he put a free header, Perry Groves, over the crossbar. Yeah, it's a brilliant delivery from Luton's left-hand side, Alfie Doughty, with his left foot and out swinging. He said there, Luke Berry completely unmarked from eight yards. I think he surprised himself because he's in so much space and what he's got to do, he's got to make sure he gets over the top ball, head the ball down. Looks like he had a crash helmet on, he's actually headed it over the crossbar. Here's Dragostin dropping the shoulder to get away from Townsend. The tall Romanian into the feet of Udogi and those bright pink boots Udogi now Werner hugging this near touchline Udogi's continued his run and gets the return ball but tracked all the way by Berry and in the end Tottenham just run out of space and can see the throw Adrian Durham has indeed come good with the James Tavernier stat his goal putting Rangers a goal up against Hibbs this afternoon Tavernier is in the top 10 highest scoring defenders ever in world football alongside the likes of Ronald Koeman and Sergio Ramos he's now scored 131 goals he's level with former Preston and Scunthorpe defender Graham Alexander what company for those two to be that's doing that's superb but Graham Alexander was a fantastic penalty taker as well wasn't he for Preston so too is Tavernier in fairness although he missed a penalty today before scoring from open play we're into three added minutes here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium you're listening to Talk Sport where Spurs trail Luton by a goal to nil and one of the surprise scorelines of the day. Palace a goal up at Forest, and you were just hearing there, Cole Palmer from the penalty spot has made it Chelsea 1, Burnley 0. Burnley down to 10 men and down and out. Let's be honest, they will be back in the Championship next season. And Chelsea always score against Burnley. That's the 18th Premier League game on the trot that they've scored. So they're down to 10 men. Damage limitation for Burnley. You could see Chelsea winning that 4 or 5 now. I think the... Uh, the TalkSport five-a-side team last week could score against Burnley and they, that had me and Sam Matterface in it. You was the uh, low block on your own, wasn't you, apparently, in the five-a-side? <laughs> low block of one. <laughs> Basically stood on the edge of the area and hoped that the shots hit me. Quite painful at times. Painful for Tottenham so far this afternoon. We've played over a minute of the three added on and Luton have a free kick right in the centre of the Spurs half. 15 yards or so in from this near right touch line which is Ross Barkley and Alfie Doughty over the ball I'd imagine it's going to be Alfie Doughty entering it with his left foot Spurs keeping a high line right along the 18 yard box so from Luton's point of view we've got Colton Morris over on the far side just going in that offside position then coming back onside just make sure that you don't get caught offside make sure the time in your run is spot on Barkley's made a late run into the air as well it was a decent delivery from Doughty and the first contact I think was off Respurt before being deflected behind for another Luton corner. Ross Barkley, incidentally, is making the 350th appearance of his club career. That the expertise that he and Andros Townsend have brought to this inexperienced in Premier League terms, Luton side has been absolutely critical, hasn't it? It is. It's um, the information that they impart on the players. It's the times that they get themselves on the ball and make themselves available. Corner to be whipped in from the far side. Doughty again with the delivery. Dragerson with a header clear. Collected by Cabore, but they're in no real hurry, Luton, to get this forward. We've only got 40 seconds of the three added minutes to play. They lead 1 0 on Talk Sport. Madison has run it back deep inside his own half, and then with the outside of the boot has expertly picked out Son, who in turn rolls it quickly to Werner. Werner into the penalty area, trying to cut it back for his captain. Brilliant block from the goal scorer, Chong. Put his body on the line there and Luton clear to the halfway mark. Last attack for Spurs. Last chance to get back on level terms before the interval. Basuma's made a strong run into the area. Forced wide by Chong. Pedro Porro takes over. Luton fans baying for the half-time whistle. Need to get a shot away quickly here, Tottenham, because we played the three out of minutes and Son has been dispossessed by Mpanzu. And there is the half-time whistle. You can hear the boos around the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium but what an afternoon this could be for Luton Town in front after only three minutes Tahi Chong continuing his excellent recent goal scoring form and with Nottingham Forest behind at home to Crystal Palace as it stands Rob Edwards injury hit side 
of putting clear daylight between them and the bottom three. Half time, it is Tottenham nil, Luton Town one. I'm going to remind everybody Luton were 3 0 up at half time at Bournemouth and lost 4 3 live on Talk Sports. So live on Talk Sport this afternoon, what will happen at Spurs? It's Spurs nil, Luton Town one at half time, second half to come live on Talk Sport. Hibs have just equalised at Rangers right on the brink of half time and we're on the brink of half time here in fact the whistle has just gone at the city ground the booze tell you the home side are losing Jeff Peters yeah it's Nottingham Forest nil Crystal Palace won Palace 11 points clear of the relegation zone as it stands and good value for their half time advantage they went ahead through Jean-Philippe Mateta Jefferson Lerma set things going with a lovely threaded pass into Eberecha Eza on the edge of the box two quick touches then the presence of mind to square to Mateta and the Frenchman smashed first time into the top corner his fourth goal in seven games they should have had a second Adam Walton with a stunning defence splitting through ball for Eza one on one with the keeper his finish not so good Matt Sells out smartly to deny him Forest playing for the first time since their points deduction which dropped them into the relegation zone they've lacked real quality in this game they haven't really tested Dean Henderson so far at the break it's Forest nil Palace one yeah, and uh, JP Mateta in good form that's three goals one assist in his last five games for Crystal Palace who lead here at Nottingham Forest who need to get better simply in the sunshine at the city ground in the second half. And half-time whistle has gone at the vitality, Ian Abrams. Bournemouth nil, Everton nil. At times this had a feeling of a real end-of-season affair. Strange, really, when you consider Everton and Broad in a relegation battle. They arguably had the best two chances. Dominic Calvert-Lewin with a shot really well saved by uh, Neto in the Bournemouth goal. Diving to his left-hand side. And Dwight McNeil from the edge of the area uh, with a shot just wide. But they were really lucky just before half-time. First of all, inside the penalty area, it looked for all the world like Tyler Adams was being hauled to the floor. For some reason, the referee didn't give it and VAR didn't even look at it. And from the follow-up, Semenya had a shot which was came back off the post. Jordan Pickford appeared to be convinced it was going wide until the last moment when it came back off of his upright. Bournemouth need to up their game. Everton just need to score a goal. It's Bournemouth nil, Everton nil. Oh, they're still playing in the first half at Stamford Bridge where Chelsea lead Burnley, who are down to 10 men by a goal to nil. Let's go to Bremer Lane for half time. Talk Sports, Alan Biggs. Sheffield United nil, Fulham nil. Precious little entertainment for the big holiday crowd, but precious it will certainly be if the Blades keep a surprise clean sheet. And their fans will take this, uh, certainly in preference to being on the end of another landslide defeat. Uh, just the one serious threat from an uninspired Fulham so far. Predictably, it came from Rodrigo Muniz, who wriggled into a close range shooting position, saw his toe poke brilliantly denied by Ivo Gerbic who managed to finger end it onto the base of a post and Muniz then put the rebound over the home team uh, dogged disciplined taking no risks at all but they did come quite close late in the half Gus Harmer shot just wide and the rare sound of applause for Chris Wilder's players as they left the pitch at the interval Sheffield United nil, Fulham nil and we've reached half time now at Stamford Bridge Talk Sports Ollie Clink now half time here it's Chelsea 1 Burnley nil. all the drama Adrian came at the end of the half Mikhailo Mudrik was a judge to have been shoved to the ground by Lorenz Asignon inside the box after a VAR check a penalty was given Asignon was then shown a second yellow card and sent off and Cole Palmer dinked it down the middle to put Chelsea in front Vincent Company, the Burnley manager was absolutely furious with the decision so much so that he was also shown a red card by the referee and to be honest Adrian I can see why he thinks it's soft Asignon doesn't trip Mudrick and it seems it's the force with which he tried to shift Mudrick out the way and a small shove on his neck. That's the reason why VAR gave the penalty. Chelsea did deserve their lead, though, I have to say. And they also had a controversial goal ruled out midway through the half. Axel de Zazi looked to have headed it home. But VAR again saying that the final touch came off his arm. I'm not too sure about that either. So VAR the star here so far, Adrian. But Chelsea in front. Half time at the bridge. Chelsea won. Burnley nil. And let's get the latest from Betfair, the official betting partner of TalkSport's Premier League coverage. Game day on TalkSport with Betfair. Get a completely free Acura or Bet Builder on football this weekend. Opt in and previous deposit required. Max free bet varies from £1 to £10 per customer. Minimum odds of 1.5 on minimum one leg. T's and C's apply 18 plus. Begambleaware.org. 
as Rangers retake the lead against Hibs. Cyril Dessers makes it 2-1. Sam Rosbottom, what do we make of the first half? Yeah, interesting game. I mean, not the ideal start for Spurs, that was it there. Uh, now, still fancied though, 10 to 11 Spurs are. Before kickoff, Adrian, Luton were 10 to 1 to take all three points. They're now into 14 to 5. But, like you said earlier, they were 3 0 up at Bournemouth during their last away match at half time. They went on to lose that 1 4 3. The comeback is fancied. The draw, 13 to 5. If Spurs are to get back into this, they do have some key players on the pitch. I'm looking at James Madison. He set up the winner in the reverse fixture last time out. He's currently even money to score or assist. So, should be a cracking second half. Sam, thanks very much. That's all thanks to Betfair 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Game day on TalkSport with Betfair. Get a completely free Acura or Bet Builder on football this weekend. Opt in and previous deposit required. Max free bet varies from £1 to £10 per customer. Minimum odds of 1.5 or minimum one leg. T's and C's apply 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. This is game day. Halftime classifieds. In the Premier League, a full time from earlier, live on TalkSport, it finished Newcastle 4, West Ham 3. Half times now Bournemouth 0, Everton 0, Chelsea 1, Burnley 0, Nottingham Forest 0, Crystal Palace 1, Sheffield United 0, Fulham 0, Tottenham 0, Luton 1, Aston Villa Wolves is at 5 30, Brentford Manchester United at 8 is live on TalkSport. In the WSL, a couple of results Aston Villa 2, Leicester 2, and Liverpool 1, Manchester City 4. Scottish Premiership half times Aberdeen 1 Ross County 1 Hearts 1 Kilmarnock 0 Motherwell 0 St Mirren 1 Rangers 2 Hibs 1 St Johnston 0 Dundee 1 Scottish Championship Arbroath 0 Dunfermline 3 Dundee United 1 Wraith Rovers 0 Morton 0 Queen's Park 0 Partick 1 Inverness Caledonia Thistle 0 Scottish League 1 Alloa 1 Annan Athletic 1 Cove Rangers 2 Stirling 1 Hamilton 0 Queen of the South 0 Kelty Hearts 1, Edinburgh City 1, Montrose Fort Kirks at 5.30, Scottish League 2, Dumbarton 0, Stenhouse Muir 0, East 5 1, Elgin 0, Peterhead 2, Clyde 0, Stranraer 0, Bonnie Rig Rose 0, and the Spartans 0, Forfar 0. Game day live on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent a Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes, so if you've got a plan, we've got a van. Uno is now available in McDonald's Happy Meal. So let's see who can shout Uno first. Bring it on. Mm, yes. Yes. Ooh. No! A wild card. <laughs> right. Ah, yes. Back in the game. Yes. Ooh. No! I draw one card. Ah. Uno. <laughs> Better luck next time. Have fun with your Uno cards. Does that one count? Nope. Oh. Some fun. Some food. It's all inside this Happy Meal. <laughs> Until 7th of May from 11am. Includes one pre-selected book or toy. Uno range comprises toys only, while stocks last. Hey, fancy scoring a grand for your local football club? Well, you're in luck, because the Sun has teamed up with Tesco's Stronger Starts programme to create the Footy for All Fund, offering £150,000 in grants to help out grassroots youth football clubs. 150 clubs will each get £1,000 to be used in any way that helps children continue to enjoy the sport they love. So, if your club or club in your area needs a boost, apply for a grant today at thesun.co.uk forward slash footy fund. Decency supply. Mmm. Mmm. When it's lunch o'clock, I just eat the tortilla naked burrito bowl. Oh, I didn't know you could get those. <laughs> There's a lot you don't know, dear. Well, I know that shirt's not coming back into fashion anytime soon. Touché. Get tortilla, subway, prep, and more delivered. For lunch and everything else. Did somebody say just eat? Charges apply. Check available restaurants in your area and open in times on justeat.co.uk for details. Don't break your stride. Hurry to Screwfix for unmissable deals on trade essentials. Big paint job on? Buy the Fortress Big Box set for $27.99 and get a half price extension pole for just $7.47. Patios and driveways in need of a clean? Get the Titan pressure washer for just $59.99. Shop now on the app at screwfix.com or in store. Delivery fees may apply. Prices valid until at least April 1st. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full season seats. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Watching the big game cozied up in the snug. Another 7-0 win! Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing around my football! But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. 
Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. In sport, what's just as important as the goals, the glory, the roar of the crowd? Yes, it's the halftime break. Time for a breather, a reset to keep everything on track. In sports betting, Betfair's safer gambling tools help you do that too. Like timeouts, so you take that all-important halftime break. Or deposit limits to help you keep count. Manage your play at safergambling.betfair.com. Simple ways to stay on top of your game with Betfair. 18 plus be gamblerware.org. Game Day Live on TalkSport with now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Aston Villa versus Wolves. Live today, contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports. 18 plus stream via internet. Terms apply. Hard-hitting football coverage. Game day. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave. On DAB, online and on your smart speaker. Game day live. On Talk Sport. The countdown to the end of the season starts here with Newcastle United against West Ham United at St James's Park. Throwing inside the penalty area on this right-hand side, looking to Carl Dewey's for Kudos has scored for West Ham United in stoppage time at the end of the first half. We put ourselves in a really strong position in the game, but uh, but ultimately, you know, we, we unpicked it. Throwing at the edge of the penalty area, takes the shot, scores for West Ham United, and they lead by three goals to one. And it's Jared Bowen with his 15th Premier League goal of the season. I thought we weren't in control. We'd gone 3-1 up and I thought that they had got control. Oh, I've got to say, this is embarrassing defending from Newcastle United. How on earth, from your own corner, can you get caught then with Bowen just running right through? And once a counter-attack from, a, I think it was a corner from our perspective, which should never happen. Here's an opportunity for Harvey Barnes! Through the legs of Fabianski! And Newcastle United are level! Oh, the Premier League, we've missed you. Shot driven in! United 3. An absolutely astonishing game to start the Premier League back this Easter. Ridiculous. Just a big credit to the players and what they've given today and, and how well we've come back and, and won that game's incredible. Stunning stuff live and exclusive on Talk Sport. It finished Newcastle 4, West Ham 3. You heard reaction from the managers there as well. Nottingham Forest have just had their oldest season ticket holder. The name's Dorothy on the pitch to celebrate and a big round of applause for her as well she's 100 and David Moyes must feel 100 years old after that game today not a happy Hammers manager and Hammers fans who might want their say on the game day phone in get ready 5.30 Jamie O'Hara Gabby Agbon the hall make a note of the number 03717 same number for your WhatsApp voice notes 03717 and let's think Stan Perry Grove Spurs fans will be ringing in in their droves as well, it's uh, not gone well for them. And they, they were too easy to play against. When people say Luton are giving it a go, that goal says it all to me about what that phrase means. They commit men forward when they can. Very much so, Aid. Um, they're not afraid when they're in possession. You said get uh, players in the box. Exactly what they did. Townsend on the right-hand side just made the right decision, went past Basuma too easily. Then he squares it to Barkley. Then he shows the composure he showed all season. And he squares it to Chong. Ball sits up. He smashed left foot. Gives Vicario no chance. Spurs are like a bad 100-metre runner, Aid. Well, when I've been uh, here, they just don't get out the blocks. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's the third time they've been 1 0 down since when I've been here against Brighton at home, Wolves at home as well. Against Crystal Palace, they went 1 0 down after 75 minutes. And it, it seems, you know, they have to have a reaction. And we think that it looks like that Brendan Johnson is going to come on. And then Louis Kulashevsky, who will come on. I thought it might have been Timo Werner actually put his gloves back on because he weren't particularly good in the first half. But Kulashevsky must be injured, aid because he was quite dangerous on that right hand side. So you heard the boos as well sort of ring out at half-time here at Spurs. So this is a massive second half for both teams. Luton, as we stand, they're four points in front of Nottingham Forest, you know, the outside the relegation places. And games involving Spurs, eh, the last 11 games involving Spurs in Premier League have seen at least three goals scored and 18 of the last 19. So for them to win the game, you're going to have to see three goals scored again today. Well, I can see it. Last time Luton were in the top flight and played at Spurs, they were 1-0 up at half-time. They lost 4-1. Gary Lineker <laughs> scored twice. In the modern era, it's Spurs nil, Luton 1. 
and the second half driving exclusive only on TalkSport with double title winner Perry Groves alongside your commentator Alex Crook. And it's also seven home games in a row now for Tottenham without scoring a first half goal. A worrying trend that I'm sure Ange Postacoglu will be keen to buck. They do often though come on strongly in the second half of matches. 14 goals scored in the first 15 minutes after Postacoglu's words of wisdom in the second half of matches. I'm sure Rob Edwards will be guarding against that. There's a change for Luton as well as Tottenham. And coming on is the Japanese international uh, Daiki Hashioka. He made his Premier League debut only recently. He's on for Reese Burke, Perry, to a change in the Luton defence. Yeah, it's, um, to be fair to Reese Burke, I thought he, he did really well in the first half. Again, that must be an injury because we mentioned that he was the one who was going man-to-man on James Madison. Hashioka is um, normally a right back but he looks like he's actually gone in in that centre half position just to like for like for Reese Burke in confirmation Brennan Johnson has replaced Kulisevsky Pedro Porro has gone down off the ball and this looks potentially quite a nasty injury there's going to be a yellow card shown for Mpanzu for the challenge but Pedro Porro Perry looks like he's in a lot of discomfort well the good news is he's actually rolling around um, because normally when you roll around that means you're not hurt because he stayed motionless didn't he for a while but it was just as you said it was just off the ball and I think it was he actually got caught by a sort of forearm from yeah from Mpanzu and then maybe his ankle buckled a little bit underneath him did it um, I don't know you'd have to ask him crooked to be fair because he's holding every part of his body (laughs) so he should be he looked like he was holding his face and he was holding his ankle I actually thought as you said initially crooked that he might have done his Achilles because it didn't look like anybody's round, and then we've just seen the replay, and it was Mpanz who said they're just catching him with a flailing arm. And now he seems to be shaking his wrist, Pedro Porro. So I think he can just just about every part of his anatomy in that challenge. It means we played a minute uh, in the second half. Tottenham all in white, shooting towards the goal away to our right. Luton in their predominantly black kit with the red socks are attacking the end of the ground where their supporters are gathered away to our left. Pedro Porro has made a miraculous recovery and will continue. Tottenham in this second half with Vicario in goal. He has the ball at his feet at the moment. Poro, Romero, Dragosin and Udogi the back four. Basuma and Saar in front of them. And it's now Johnson, Madison and Werner who missed a golden chance in that first half in behind Son up front. The Luton lineup is Kaminsky in goal. Kabore, Hashio, Kamengi and Doughty in a back four. Five in midfield. Townsend, Chong and Panzu, Barkley and Berry with Morris the lone striker. This is a huge, obviously, second half for Luton Town, but it's a massive second half for Hasioku because he's actually playing exactly the same role as Reese Burke, where Rob Edwards has asked him to follow James Madison wherever he goes. And here is Madison, just outside the penalty area, drills the ball low into Brennan Johnson, looks to pick out Son. Well, that will do Hasioka's confidence, the world of good sliding in and diverting the ball away from the Spurs captain. That was really good play from Hasioka, as you said there. It looked like Son was just going to side foot it into the net with his right foot. And Tottenham Hashioka. fans finding their voice. They've been quiet at times this afternoon. They've been audible with their groans as well. That's a, a late challenge from Chong, which might result in another Luton booking. I think he's just got a final warning there from refer- referee Jarrah Gillett. It's a foul that gives Tottenham a free kick just in from this right touch line. Just caught Pedro Porro as he looked to scoot away and an opportunity for the Spaniard to whip in the free kick. I can confirm it was definitely Pedro Porro's right ankle <laughs> this time because actually Chong's lucky he hasn't been booked because he's lying on the floor and he just sived him down. He's got made no attempt to play the ball whatsoever. So uh, Jared Gillett, I think he's uh, let Chong get away with one there. Maybe it's because he's already dished out a yellow card early in the second half. He doesn't want it to become that kind of game, the referee. Spurs nil, Luton one. Free kick for Tottenham. They've got a cluster of white shirts lined up on the edge of the Luton area. Pedro Porro stands over the free kick. It's not a great delivery and it's not a great clearance either by Andros Townsend. Another swipe to it and it goes back out of play for a Tottenham throw in. It's awful from Pedro Porro. You've got to make sure you missed the first man. Just hits it straight at Andros Townsend and Andros Townsend just shins it out of play. Back to Pedro Porro on this near side. Everybody bar the Tottenham goalkeeper Vicario inside the Luton half of the field. Tottenham looking for an equaliser. 
early in the second half at this stage the first half they were already one down Madison away from Chong the goal scorer Madison with the mazy run into the area stopped in his tracks by Doughty Ross Barkley with not too much room to work with on the edge of his own box he plays it back to Hashioka the half time sub and then Townsend ushering the ball into Mpanzu neatly turns away from Udogi first foray forward in the second half for Luton Town who lead 1-0 on Talk Sport Doughty raiding down the left hand side he's got Chong ahead of him the pass was slightly undercooked and Porro hooks it clear but it's picked up by Doughty on the edge of the area into Ross Barkley Barkley with a left footed drive towards the bottom corner and it's clawed away by Vicario awkward one for the Tottenham keeper that was brilliantly worked by Luton Town from their right back position with Hasioka and Ross Barkley just playing the ball out and then it comes over onto the left hand side you said it comes to Ross Barkley just takes a touch with his right foot gets it onto his left foot Vicario scambling to his low down to his left hand side good feet movement there from Vicario made sure that he got his body down got a big left palm to it I think we're going to be in for a fun second half as Tottenham pile forward looking for an equaliser Johnson to the far post it looks like it's an own goal Werner was lurking but Kabore kicks the post in frustration Tottenham as so often over the course of the season score early in the second half but they've had a huge helping hand from Issa Kabore Postacoglu unmoved the Spurs fans are on their feet it is Tottenham 1, Luton 1 and the comeback kings are at it again on Talk Sport. This is definitely a team of two halves, Tottenham Hotspur. So they don't start the first half particularly well. The second half they've come out, been on the blocks. It might be a VAR check because Brennan Johnson wide on this right-hand side. which looks like he was level. It's a great little give and go with Brennan Johnson. James Madison, no, I'm sorry, Pedro Porro and Can. Johnson pick out the right pass and he just rolls it across the six yard box Kabore panics because he's got Timo Werner coming in behind him he's just come off his shin Kabore's got to do better with his left foot if he stays nice and calm he just clears it with his left foot he's come off his shin gone into the back of net it looks like Spurs have got back in this game at 1-1 but I say we've got a VR, VAR check for offside yeah, and as that check goes on, there's been a second goal at Stamford Bridge. Here's Ollie Clink. Well, well, well. Chelsea won. Ten man Burnley won. What a goal this is from Josh Cullen. The ball dropped for him on the edge of the box, and he's lashed it in on the half volley. And right at the start of the second half, the ten men are level. Chelsea won. Burnley won. So Burnley on terms in West London. Tottenham on terms here in North London. The VAR check complete. No offside. So Issa Kabore lacklessly putting the ball in his own net. And Tottenham, having fallen behind early in the first half, make it 1-1 in the early stage of the second. You wonder how big that save from Vicario to deny Barkley a second Hatter's goal could be. I think if you offered Rob Edwards a point right now, Perry Groves, he'd take it. Yeah, very much so, because they Spurs have come out in this second half on the front foot. And when you make a substitution... You want him to have an impact, exactly what Brendan Johnson's done, because he made sure in the early part of the move that he stayed on side, was looking right across the line. And Pedro Porro coming in that inverted inside right position. Spurs like to put their fullbacks obviously infield. Great little give and go. And then can Brendan Johnson pick out the right pass? Exactly what he did. He just made sure he put it in that danger area right across six yard box. But Kabore's got to do better. I think, in fairness, had Johnson not have been involved in what was a mentally and physically draining playoff final for Wales in midweek he probably would have started this game Ange Postacoglu turning to the former Nottingham Forest man at half time and that's proved an inspired change it's all Tottenham now Madison trying to pick out the run of Johnson for a moment I thought he might shoot because Kaminsky was off his line here's Basuma 15 yards outside the box Luton have just got to get a grip of this early in the second half they're in danger of being steamrolled. Pedro Porro into Madison. Little back heel for Son. Porro continued his run. And this time, Cabore gets ahead of Werner and diverts it away from goal. It wasn't a dissimilar position from where he found his own net a few minutes ago. Yeah, James Madison has started to cause a few problems, getting himself in pockets of space. Great little ball round the corner to Song. And in turn, little just helps it on to Porro. Again, across the six-yard box. This time, Cabore did stay nice and calm made sure he kept his eye on the ball and just swept away with his left foot 
but James Madison is just starting to cause a few problems for Luton because Hashioko has come on as sub for Luton he's sort of getting twixt in between he doesn't know whether to go all the way in he doesn't know whether to stay off and that's allowing Madison to get himself on the ball as Perry Groves the former title winner with Arsenal here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium 1-1 the score you're listening to Talk Sport and again Tottenham have got an injury issue Brennan Johnson this time is down his haunches on the halfway line but they're not going to put the ball out of play Spurs I don't think Madison wriggling away from Mpanzu Johnson has got back on his feet isn't running at full belt just at this moment in time I'm not sure he particularly wants to pass but he gets it from Saar and here's Johnson trying to take on Doughty Saar with a little flick for Madison oh he's going to come for Saar he was offside bounces off his shin into the arm of the goalkeeper anyway and we have the breakthrough at Bramall Lane Alan Biggs get this Sheffield United 1 Fulham 0 Ben Brereton Diaz with the goal running home at the far post following a break and a cross from Ollie McBurney a Fulham mistake punished Sheffield United 1 Fulham 0 well maybe there is hope for Sheffield United yet any sign of a forest equaliser at the city ground Jeff Peters no they're still trailing to that early Mateta goal uh, Hudson Adoy with an effort in this second half comfortable for the goalkeeper Ezra very nearly got a second for the visitors but across the face and wide it's Forest nil Palace 1 Tottenham coming forward again here 1-1 the score Pedro Porro racing away from Chong into Son the captain shoots straight at the goalkeeper just didn't connect cleanly Son he lies down with his face in the turf had he have got proper purchase I think Luton may well have been picking the ball out of the net again and what is worrying Perry Groves already they look very tired the Hatters yeah just Tottenham running right down their right hand side again Pedro Porro get himself clear just a great ball into the box and you expect Son to score and he said he didn't really get the right connection and it was well saved by Quince with his legs. Here's Johnson on the edge of the area, takes a huge deflection with a shot, could have gone anywhere. Diverts the ball away from goal and it's cleared up to the halfway line by Chong. Let's get an update at the Vitality. Here's Talk Sports' Ian Abrahams. Almost now, gone Bournemouth nil, Everton nil, Bournemouth with two efforts on goal. First Tavernier shot saved by Pickford and then a brilliant block by Branthwaite to deny Semenya. At the other end, Calvert-Lewin wanted a penalty when going down under a challenge of Adams in the box, didn't get it. Bournemouth nil, Everton nil. And don't forget, still to come, we'll have live and exclusive commentary of Brentford against Manchester United here on TalkSport. That's an 8 o'clock kickoff, and this Sunday, TalkSport brings you live and exclusive commentary of the British heavyweight title fight between Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark from London's O2 Arena. Our team on the night includes Adam Smith, Gareth A. Davis, and the former super bantamweight champion Spencer Oliver, as well as your commentator John Rawling. The action on the night starts at 6 o'clock on TalkSport 2 before switching over to TalkSport for the main event at 8.30. That's Fabio Wardley against Fraser Clark this Sunday, live on TalkSport. Listen via DAB, your Alexa, or on the TalkSport app. And don't forget to watch along on the TalkSport Boxing YouTube channel as well. Stoppage in play here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium because Hashioka is injured. Just holding his lower back, the half-time substitute for Luton Town. Just watching Ange Postacoglu, he's not the most demonstrative of managers, Crook, is he? You know, like you see Mikel Arteta bounce around like a spring of Spaniel in his technical area. Even when Spurs equalised there, which was a good finish from Kabore, to be fair, for, um, for the O-goal, he didn't even take his hands out of his pockets. He just stood there completely impassive as if to say, all right, we're back at 1-1, now expect he's gone and win the game. And Andrews Townsend has given away a free kick. Cool. Involved in an altercation there. With Doggy initially and then Berry. Yeah, I think it's just a, a Doggy who's a little bit late on Luke Berry. Luke Berry just spinning away from him. And Doggy just catching Luke Berry's calf. So difficult, isn't it, for Luton? I mentioned that they've got 10 players out injured now. They've got two goalkeepers on the bench. They've got three 18-year-olds as well this is pretty much it this is what Rob Edwards has at his disposal well, they're down to their, their bare bones but what you get from Luton Crookie you always get 100% effort and 100% application that's exactly what we've done we're just coming out playing in the hour and they're still in this game here at 1-1 because you know from Alfred Doughty's point of view he can whip the uh, crosses in from free kicks and corners 
create the most chances from set piece in the Premier League this season 30, 37 along with James Ward-Prowse well he's about to whip in a free kick here Doughty to round about the six yard line Morris has just tried to help it to a teammate but it's whacked away by Dragusin throw in for Luton and there's been a second goal at Bramall Lane here's Alan Biggs again well this is more normal Sheffield United 1 Fulham 1 an equaliser from João Polinia a flicked header from the near post from a corner from Pereira and Polinia's mistake had led to Sheffield United's opening goal he's quickly made amends Sheffield United 1 Fulham 1 John is even there all square at Stamford Bridge Chelsea 1 Burnley 1 Palace lead at Forest and it's goalless between Bournemouth and Everton and here in North London but it's Tottenham 1 Luton 1 the game's just got a little bit disjointed now I wonder if that might suit Luton very good. yeah got a little bit fractious I think Luton are being very very cute with little tactical fouls that time it was Mengi as Son tried to get away from him just cut on the inside and Mengi just left his foot out to be fair again I think he's very lucky not to get a yellow car from Jared Gillett there because Tottenham then had a 2v2 situation Adrian Durham informs me that that's the fourth own goal that Tottenham have benefited from in the Premier League this season more than any other side Issa Kabore turning Brennan Johnson's low cross into his own net I think in fairness Werner would have scored anyway I say that it's Timo Werner but it would have been a tap in it's been a bit harsh cookie <laughs> even you might have scored that in a five-a-side talk sport <laughs> you obviously didn't see me play last week <laughs> I heard <laughs> here's Son well inside his own half the Tottenham captain 61 on the clock on talk sport 1-1 the score a huge game both in terms of Tottenham and their Champions League aspirations and Luton when it comes to staying up with Forrest losing at home to Palace a point would be a good result but there's a long way to go yeah Saar into Johnson Berners made the dart again and again it's turned across the face of goal by a Luton defender it was Kabore again fair play to him he's, he's put the ball in his own net once he's made two brilliant blocks facing his own goal since then yeah Luton are just starting to look a little bit disjointed and here's Son in the area Son picking out Madison time to bring it under control Madison with a shot it's a brave block inside the area by Luke Berry they can't get it away Tottenham Johnson's cross so he flapped it at Kaminsky and the end managed to push it away and Kaminsky I think collided with a post it's all happening here at Tottenham and at the City Ground there's been a second goal Jeff Peters we had the equaliser Nottingham Forest 1 Crystal Palace 1 Chris Wood continuing his good form under Nuno a beautiful little back flick header from Gibbs White's floated ball into the box it really is a cute finish lobbed over the goalkeeper it's Forest 1 Palace 1 and St Johnson have equalised over in Scotland St Johnson 1 Dundee 1 Rangers still leading Hibs by two goals to one they'll be level on points with Celtic Celtic in action against Livingston tomorrow it's turning into a fascinating title race north of the border that wasn't convincing goalkeeping from Kaminsky yeah to be fair just got a little Pedro Porro just obviously got his crossing from this right hand side just took a little deflection off the chong and then that had Kaminsky scrambling, scram, scrambling along his line and as he just fisted the ball out he ended up colliding with a near post I don't think it, I think he's just being very cute cookie just trying to t- take this thing out of the game because he's pretending that he's hit his head on the post he didn't it was his hands uh, Jordan Clark is coming on for Luke Berry for Luton so another change for Rob Edwards and we have the breakthrough goal down to Vitality here's Ian Abraham 64 gone Bournemouth 1 Everton 0 Dominic Solanke is enjoying the season of his life and he's just scored a terrific goal ball in from the left hand side he got between uh, two central defenders for Everton one was Tarkovsky the other the highly rated Branthwaite and he powered a header past Pickford in from six yards out bad news this for Everton it's Bournemouth 1 Everton 0 I don't know, Bournemouth felt a little bit sore that maybe Solanke wasn't included in the England squad for these uh, recent internationals. Meanwhile, back here at Spurs, Luton have won a corner. Sliding challenge by Dragosin on Jordan Clark, who's fresh off the bench and keen to make an impact. Yeah, Jordan Clark just getting in that inside right position, trying to get his cross in. Dragosin obviously followed the run, got the block in. Alfie Delta, a little jog over take the corner in swinging from the right hand side of his left foot and this is these are going to be Luton's 
main chance is cooking now if they can get themselves another goal and go in front from set pieces because they're just starting to look a little bit tired so you've got to get a good quality delivery from Alfie Doughty Doughty with the whip delivery punched away only to the edge of the area and it was fired back in by Clark and it's another really good save down to his right by Vicario he saw that late through a crowd of bodies and managed to fingertip it behind for another Luton corner yeah it's fisted away initially by Vicario came to Jordan Clark good first was going touch in. Yep, good first touch with his chest he just had the ball just set up brilliant volley with his right foot Vicario full length down to his right hand side just tipped the ball by the post for another corner for Luton on the left hand side Tim Krull by the way Norwich's uh, backup goalkeeper is out warming up just in case Kaminsky can't continue we'll keep eyes on that Doughty about to take the corner from this near left hand side not it clear by Romero, but again, not much distance on it. And Clark, who's made a real impact since coming off the bench in these first couple of minutes, drills the cross into the air. It's cleared, toe-poked away by Madison. Another goal at Bramwell Lane. Back there, there is shortly, but Luton enjoying a good spell here. 1-1 the score on Talk Sport. They'll be aware, I'm sure, certainly those travelling fans will, that Forrest are back on level terms, that Everton have fallen behind at Bournemouth. What about, what about the latest goal at Bramall Lane, Alan Biggs? Sheffield United 2, Fulham 1, the Blades are back in front. Oli McBurn is the scorer, quickly taken, free kick which set uh, Brereton Diaz free down the left. He teed up McBurney, that, they sort of did the same thing in reverse order for the first goal. The Blades back ahead, Sheffield United 2, Fulham 1. Probably too little, too late for Sheffield United, but it's all getting very tight for that final relegation place Forest on 22 points as it stands Luton a point above the dotted line Brentford who play Manchester United later on 26 points 24 clear of Forest and Everton on 26 points as well it's going to be an enthralling end to the season in terms of the Premier League title race Adrian Durham will be live at the Etihad tomorrow for the Sunday session as Arsenal take on Man City Champions League places are up for grabs Tottenham need a win here to cement their grip on those Villa play Wolves later Manchester United in action live on TalkSport just about still in the conversation they go to Brentford at 8 o'clock tonight in the conversation for what? for a Champions League place in your conversation (laughs) and of course down at the bottom Luton are giving it a right good go and there's been another goal at Bramall Lane Alan Biggs it's Sheffield United 3 Fulham 1 um but the referee may have intervened on this. It was a cross that was from Harmer that was bundled in at close range by uh, Ben Brereton Diaz. And I think a free kick has been given to Fulham here. I will resolve that. It, <laughs> Brummel Lane was celebrating in bedroom Bedlam, but that has been disallowed. It remains Sheffield United 2, Fulham 1. Or uh, Well, I'll clear this up. There might even be... a a penalty what well, don't can't be uh, Sheffield United 2 Fulham 1 we'll clear it got a bit excited there Big Z Sheffield United finally scoring some goals Rodrigo Bentoncourt has come on to replace James Madison Giovanni Lo Celso is on as well perhaps are making way Madison doesn't look particularly pleased with this decision Perry Groves has got his head down as he Gets a pat on the he, back from Postacoglu. He can't believe he's been given the hook because it was the longest walk-off, wasn't it, Crookie, from the centre of the pitch just to make sure the fans knew that he's not injured then that he's been dragged off. And I actually thought he was starting to get himself into the game in the second half and starting to cause a few problems. I can't believe that Postacoglu has um, dragged him off because if you're looking for a bit of creativity, you leave him on and you take either Saar or Basuma off. Well, Luton have got another sub ready as well. Corley Woodrow is stripped for action. Tahi Chong will put them ahead very early in this game, cancelled out by Kabore's own goal to give us this 1 1 scoreline. Has been receiving treatment, but I think he wants to come back on, Chong. So Woodrow maybe will be made to wait. Mengi's not happy that he's been penalised for a foul on Son. Son down his haunches just inside the Tottenham half he played 69 minutes it's 1-1 here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and a big final quarter of the game still to come here on Talk Sport the second of our three live and exclusive commentaries from the Premier League on this Easter Saturday here's Romero 
slowly brings the ball into the Luton half. The possession stats heavily weighted in Spurs' favour, certainly since the break. Johnson into Benton Kuru, who's just come on, looking for Sol in the centre, comes to Werner at the far post, he gets it across the face of goal, and then Benton Kuru's volley is blocked by Mengi. I think if Son had got on the end of that, Spurs would be in front. Benton Kerr's cross turn behind, and the last touch was off the Tottenham substitute. And it will be a goal kick for Luton. What a ball in from Benton Kerr. Great little ball in from Pedro Porro. This releases Benton Kerr again in this inside right position where Spurs have had a lot of joy in this second half. Whips it across the six yard box. Son comes sliding in, can't quite get himself on the end of it. You are listening to Tottenham against Luton on Talk Sport with now. Don't forget that with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Aston Villa against Wolves and Brentford v Man United live today. Contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports. What it would mean to Luton Town if they could hold out for a point here. But we've seen so many late Tottenham winners since Postacoglu took up office it would be a big win for Tottenham if they could turn one point into three in terms of those Champions League places Johnson into Porro left footed shot over the crossbar couldn't keep it down and it's a goal kick for Luton let's get back to Bramall Lane Bigsy that goal has it been given? it has been given it's Sheffield United 3 Fulham 1 there was a prolonged VAR check uh, against uh, Brereton Diaz who bundled in Harmer's cross I thought there might have been a suspicion of handball in the end they were looking at violent conduct couldn't quite work that one out but the goal is given Sheffield United 3 Fulham 1 never in doubt a rare win for Sheffield United Probably too late to save them, but a bit of a blow for Fulham. They were eyeing a top half finish after an impressive recent run of form, including that win against Tottenham, who we're watching here just before the international break. Here down the Luton right hand side goes Jordan Clark. The doggy got there in front of Clark, though, and it's going to be played forward from inside the penalty area by Dragusin. Just looking at Spurs, obviously, Lo Celso's come on with Bentancur. So Bentancur's gone on, obviously, in the deeper midfield position. And Lo Celso's gone into the James Madison position. And you could tell, we said about James Madison coming off, because when he knows that Bentancur's coming on, he's more creative and he'll get on the ball even more. Here's Clark. Carries the ball towards the penalty area. Little step over on the edge of the box. Out to Chong, the Luton goal scorer. 1-1 the score, and then... Clark had strayed into an offside position as he got the ball back and Chong has gone down again to the frustration of the Spurs fans. I think they feel that Luton are time-wasting a little bit here. Kaminsky just got a ticking off a moment or two ago. Is it cramp for Chong? Or something more serious, Perry Groves? Yeah, I think he's just maybe just turned his ankle. And I think as well, he's probably in a bit of a daze because he's lost his composure on... Luton's left-hand side where Spurs have been very, very good with Porro going into that inside right position. Brennan Johnson's made a massive difference for Spurs. Been miles more of a threat going forward on this right-hand side. His crosses have been excellent across the six-yard box. From Spurs' point of view, it's whether they can fashion that chance and be clinical. From Luton's point of view, it's about keeping their concentration levels very high because they've worked really hard. We're coming up to 73 minutes gone now saying they've put a lot of effort in to his first, three, seven, first 73 minutes and one man who's going to have his eyes very much trained on this game is Jamie O'Hara he'll be part of the game though phone in on Talk Sport with Gabby Agbonahor once we're finished here 03717223344 is the number to get your calls in and that's followed of course by live and exclusive national radio commentary of Brentford against Manchester United build up on talk sport from 7.30 as Werner is flagged offside Fred on your dim nap who had been on loan at Rotherham United until recently has come on to replace Chong for Luton more fresh legs to try and see this point over the line with 16 minutes to go well, I think what's happened is Onya Dimri said just come on there for Tahith Chong. And he's been told that he's got to go man-to-man with Pedro Porro. He's been causing problems down Luton's left-hand side. 
1-1 here between Tottenham and Luton. 1-1 at the City Ground. Forest have come from behind against Crystal Palace. Bournemouth lead Everton by a Dominic Solanke goal to nil. It's Chelsea 1, 10-man Burnley 1. Bit of a surprise scoreline there. They've been down to 10 for a long time, Burnley, in that game. And Sheffield United 3-1 up at home to Fulham. Earlier today it finished Newcastle 4, West Ham 3. West Ham were 3-1 up with 15 minutes to play on Talk Sport. Son over on the right-hand side for Spurs for a moment. Johnson has taken up a central striker's role. Son who had that big chance in the first half when he hit both posts. He's been starved of service since then. But it's still all Tottenham in terms of possession. Back with Romero in the multicoloured footwear on the halfway line for Spurs. Now the Celso dropping deep. Luton keeping their shape well. And the ball is all the way back with Vicario, the Tottenham goalkeeper. Just a bit of a lull in proceedings as Richarlison warms up for Spurs down below us. We well, could just see all around the pitch, Luton have gone man for man. Hashikawa has actually now gone man for man on Bentancur. And Bentancur is just dropping a little bit deeper. So there's a massive hole in the centre-half position for Luton. Well, Vicario has just blasted the ball outfield and played it straight to his opposite number, Kaminsky. He, in turn, chips it over the halfway line. Morris up in the air with Romero. It's well won back by Mpanzu. Did look to have been caught by Lascelles, so the referee allows play to continue. Jared Gillett had a good view of it. It's back with Kaminsky now. And he scoots the ball out to the right, but it's too far away from Townsend, and Tottenham will have a throw. Good closing down from Brennan Johnson. Kaminsky just took a bad touch, got it stuck under his feet. Brennan Johnson thought he was going to close him down, but Kaminsky managed to just scoop the ball away with his right foot. So he's just trying to get it out to Andrews Townsend, hits it out of play, gives the ball straight back to Spurs. Is whether they can work the way up from Vicario again down this right hand side. 11 of the 15 defeats that Luton have suffered this season have been by the odd goal. They've lost a lot of games late as well, a lot of points late in matches. I remember being at Kellerworth Road very early in the season when Liverpool needed a stoppage time equaliser. Arsenal got a late winner there. I'm sure Perry Groves remembers that one. They're always in games, but recently... And they seem to have been finding a way to lose them, even at 3-0 up against Bournemouth. They still came out with a defeat. Let's get back to the city ground. Any sign of a winner for Jeff Peters? Not yet, still Forest 1, Palace 1, Chris Woods, header cancelling out the early Mateta goal. Gia Rayner off the bench has brought out a save from Henderson. Ezra's had an effort blocked at the other end. It's Forest 1, Palace 1. Here's Werner. Running at the Luton defence. Back to Lacelso on the edge of the box. Werner again looking for Lacelso, who's got the wrong side. Oh, what an opportunity! Did that cross the line from Johnson? No sign that the referee's watches are flickering. And somehow Brennan Johnson has fouled to score from four yards out. Another extraordinary Tottenham chance that goes begging. Perry Groves. From initial looks from where we are, Crooked, it looked like the ball crossed the line. I was just waiting for Jared Gillett to look at his wristwatch and point to the centre. So Brennan Johnson can't believe that he's missed a chance. He peeled away, thought he'd scored. It's really good play over on the left from Spurs. Link up play with Lacelso and Werner. Oh, so close. It hit the goalkeeper. And I think it was going to trickle over the goal line. And it's really good defending from Alfie Doughty, who got back there, tracked the ball and managed to swipe it away left footed <laughs> so close to the whole ball being over the line exactly yeah. just as it's popped up you can tell because the post is skewing our vision so it wasn't across the line to be fair it was a really good save from Kaminsky not sure he knew too much about but it but he's just got to make himself big crookie exactly what he did Brendan Johnson should be scoring he comes in from the right hand side said so just hits it at Kaminsky Alfie Doughty keeps himself nice and lively manages just to hook it off the line they've had so many chances Tottenham over the course of these 79 minutes but it's still 1-1 they have a free kick just outside the penalty area it's going to be driven towards the far post and driven high over the bar by Pedro Porro it's a goal kick for Luton and they will take as long 
as is feasibly possible. Another goal at Bramwell Lane. Extraordinary. Alan Biggs. This is Barmy. Sheffield United 4. Fulham 1. Ollie McBurney with his second goal. Stabbed in following a goal mouth scr- scramble. Just as the Fulham manager, looking devastated, Marco Silva was about to make a triple substitution. The game is over. Sheffield United 4. Fulham 1. Aberdeen lead Ross County by two goals to one. Can Everton get back on level terms at the vitality? Ian Abrahams. Nine minutes to go. Bournemouth won Everton nil. But Everton are pushing after that Solanke goal. They've sent on Beto. They've just taken a corner short to McNeil. But the delivery is not great. Bournemouth defending very deeply right now. Everton with eight minutes to save themselves here. It's Bournemouth won Everton nil. And Chelsea need a winner against ten men at Stamford Bridge. Ollie Clink. Chelsea won ten man. Burnley won big chance for Chelsea just now Crookie Cole Palmer hammering one at goal from the edge of the box but it was well held by Murich Burnley have come close too though Lyle Foster with a header forcing a big save from Petrovic the 10 men battling well here can they hold on for a precious point 15 to go Chelsea won 10 man Burnley won and that's a result that will only add weight to Maurizio Pochettino's detractors if Chelsea can't beat the 10 men of Burnley 10 minutes to go here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, nobody is leaving early. 1-1 the score. But didn't Chelsea be fourth, apparently? So Pochettino said, didn't he, from all the stats? Right? Yeah. He said he's done for all the stats and because he expected uh, goals, we should be fourth. Shame that football's not decided on paper, isn't it? Here's uh, Andros Townsend attacking down that Luton right. Barkley on the edge of the penalty area. Tried to skip away from Basuma. Basuma was too strong. And the Celso can carry it forward and plays it out to the right. And Johnson, Johnson on the edge of the penalty area, just checked his run. Cries of man on from the Tottenham fans. They've still got the ball. Werner inside the box, taking on Kabore, drilling it low towards the near post. And safe hands from Kaminsky. There has been a goal now at Stamford Bridge. Ollie Kling. Finally, finally, Chelsea breakthrough. Chelsea 2, 10 man Burnley 1. It's Cole Palmer with his second of the game. He was neatly flicked through by the substitute Raheem Sterling. He got onto it inside the box and lashed it into the bottom right hand corner. And he looks to have broken Burnley hearts. Chelsea 2, 10 man Burnley 1. Never mind expected goals. If Chelsea didn't have Cole Palmer, they might well be in a relegation fight this season. He has been he's absolutely been, terrific. So he has been the, the shining light from, hasn't he? Probably disappointed not getting any minutes for England. We're just getting a replay on our monitors of the goal decision system. The aerial shot that proved the ball didn't cross the line. I mean, it is inches, isn't it, away from Tottenham winning the game? Yeah, it just looks like probably what? 94% of the ball across the line and to be fair to Alfie Doughty he didn't give it up did he? And it would have gone in had he not have tracked it Exactly It, it, it would have gone in We've got a stoppage in play here because Doughty actually is receiving treatment again the Tottenham fans feel like it's a bit of a time wasting tactic from the visitors You're listening to Tottenham against Luton on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car whatever the mission home or away Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day Corley Woodrow uh, Woodrow will be coming on now for Luton I think Doughty might be the player making way there was an injury doubt Doughty coming into this game and he's not going to last the full 90 minutes 83 on the clock 1-1 the score and that might mean a bit of uh, reorganisation for Luton I think on your dimnet he's going to go into the back four to replace that vacant uh, left-back spot. Meanwhile, there's been more drama at Bramwell Lane. Alan Biggs again. Well, yeah, the score, actually, I'll give you that first. Sheffield United, three, Fulham, two, because the Ollie McBurney apparent fourth goal was disallowed by VAR after another long check. But uh, since then, Fulham substitute Bobby de cordova Reed has fired his team back into this. Four minutes left of the 90, Sheffield United, three, Fulham, two. From 4-1 to 3-2 in the blink of an eye. Welcome to VAR. Premier everybody. League never disappoints. <laughs> what a day it's been. It started, didn't it, with that incredible game at St James's Park and it just keeps on getting better. Who knows, we might have a late sting here at Spurs. We often do. 
And there's been another goal at Stamford Bridge. Ollie Clink. Can you believe it? Chelsea 2, 10 man Burnley 2. Corner from the right hand side. And there was Dara O'Shea up from the back to head it at goal. Petrovic got a hand to it, but it ends up in the back of the net. He knee slides in front of the Burnley fans. They deserve that this afternoon. And the 10 men are level. Could it be a precious point for them? 10 minutes to go. Chelsea 2, Burnley 2. This season is bonkers, isn't it? Absolutely bonkers. Am I on a, like, some acid trip here? Like, <laughs> Sheffield United winning 3-1 at home. Then going well, they were 4-1 and it's 3-2. <laughs> and then Burnley going down to 10 men and getting themselves back into 2-2 where Chelsea should be fourth according to Pochettino. It's probably going to finish Brentford 5, Manchester United 4 later on on TalkSport. Uh, Richardson is on for Basuma. No, I would not. But... Luton have won a corner and Andros Townsend is whipping up the travelling fans over in that far corner they barely had the ball in the final third Luton in this second half but the way this day is going wouldn't it be like someone to get their head on this and put the Hatters in front Ross Barkley bouncing the ball down like Rafa Nadal serving for his latest French Open title places it now inside the apex we've got five minutes to play on talk sport it's Tottenham 1 Luton 1 massive game at both ends of the Premier League Barkley with the delivery headed away by Porro and Clark slipped on the edge of the area as he tried to put it back into the box and Son now will race away and picks out Werner on the left hand side Werner against Cabore Werner with a low cross Son with a shot deflected and in and the captain may just have won it for Spurs right at the end of the game. It's yet another late, late show in North London. Luton players crestfallen on the turf as Son is mobbed by his teammates. How big a goal is that in terms of the race for the Champions League and to stay in the top flight? It is Tottenham 2. Luton Town won, well, finally, they're ahead. Well, take a bow, son, take a bow, because come off the hour, come off the man. When you want a big moment, you need your big players to step up, exactly what Son Young ming has done. He's got himself in the edge of the six-yard box. As it's come from that left-hand side, he's opened his body out. He's hit it with his right foot. He's taken a slight deflection. Kaminsky's committed himself low down to his left-hand side that all come from Luton's corner and it was Son who picked the ball up on the halfway line released Timo Werner out on that left-hand side he goes on the outside of Cabore it's a little cross in Brennan Johnson coming in for the right-hand side gets a great little lay with his left foot and Son just coming in late just made sure that he composed himself just hit it with his right foot he's taken a wicked deflection off Hasioka to give Kaminsky absolutely no chance to put Spurs 2-1 up here at the, White, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's the 17th goal that Luton have conceded in the final 15 minutes of matches and surely it's the goal that will win it for Tottenham. And there's been another late goal at the Vitality. This could be massive as well. Ian Abraham. Minute to go. Bournemouth 1, Everton 1. It's a calamity for Neto in the Bournemouth goal and Chris Mepham. It's McNeil left-hand side with a long driven cross. Neto comes to catch it. Mepham gets in his way. Neto doesn't catch it. And Beto sticks the ball in to an empty net from three yards out. Lots of Eto's in there. It's Bournemouth 1, Everton 1. And that is another blow for Luton and their hopes of staying up. Son replaced by Hoybier for Tottenham, so the skipper's last act is to score what could be the winner. It's also a milestone moment for the Korean. He goes ahead now of Cliff Jones, up to fourth on the list of Tottenham's all-time leading scorers. Sure, that won't be the forefront of his mind right now. All about the points at this precious stage of the season but you have to feel again Perry Groves for Luton Town once again they've been in the game they've taken the lead and once again they are going to lose the Son's goal Cookie was um, a load of naivety there from Luton Town because it was their corner wasn't it out on their right hand side where Ross Barkley took it as it got cleared Son picked the ball up no one's marking him 
he puts it out to Timo Werner and I have to say that Brennan Johnson since he's come on he's been brilliant on the right hand side gets himself in the centre of all position just lays it back Son finish off say slight deflection off Hasioka well Nottingham Forest fans will be aware that Luton have fallen behind can they get a late winner at home to Crystal Palace let's check back in with Jeff Peters couple of minutes remaining it's Forest 1 Palace 1 but it's Palace have come close to going back in front corner swung in I think it was Nico Williams the defender who got his head onto it it hit the Forest woodwork and they were able to get it clear as it stands Forest out of the relegation zone Forest 1 Palace 1 there's been another goal the vitality back there there is shortly what an end to the day here on Talk Sport at least the three o'clock games anyway we've still got Brentford United to come live and in full from the GTEC, 8 o'clock kickoff. The game day phone in before that. If your team are involved, or even if they're not this afternoon, let us know your views. 03717 It's uh, Tottenham just trying to keep the ball at the moment. The Celso has been tripped at the halfway line. Let's find out about what could be the winner down on the Dorset coast Ian Abrahams form of two Everton one oh poor old Seamus Coleman ball in from the right hand side there's not a Bournemouth player in the six yard box it passes two of his colleagues Pickford's left it because it's going nowhere and he just chests it into his own net it's a calamitous own goal how costly could it prove form of two Everton one they're into 14 minutes added time at Bramall Lane and there's been another goal. Alan Biggs. Sheffield United 3, Fulham 3. Rodrigo Munez with the equaliser and an acrobatic volley. That's nine for the season, eight in his last eight games. We've got power to add here. Sheffield United 3, Fulham 3. So into 14 added minutes there. We're into the first of nine here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Spurs 2, Luton Town 1. As it stands, Spurs are going level with Aston Villa in fourth place. Villa in action against Wolves later. And Luton's gap to the bottom three is decreasing despite the fact they took an early lead here through Tahi Chong, counselled out early in the second half when Kabore turned a Brennan Johnson cross into his own net and then Johnson the provider for what looks like the winner, a deflected effort from Son. But you have to say Perry Gross wasn't having his best day at the office before that yeah but the thing with Son heung min is he always is available crookie he goes right until the last minute well the 86 minute obviously when he scored it looks like might be the winning goal and then obviously he's been substituted just looking at Luton Town Rob Edwards has gone all in like a poker player he's just gone four up front you've got Clark on this left hand side Corley Woodrow's gone up front with Colton Morris and Andres Townsend over on the right hand side it's going to be 10 games without a win for Luton. Look like Hashioka there caught the cell. So referee, I don't think, had a clear view of it. So it's going to be a, a throw-in instead of a foul. A throw-in that Spurs are not particularly racing to take. Pedro Porro right in front of Rob Edwards and Burnley have almost won it at Stamford Bridge Ollie Clink oh crookie two minutes to go Chelsea two ten man Burnley two how close can you get corner whipped in from that right hand side once again there was Jay Rodriguez he leapt into the air powered the header at goal but it cannoned back off the bar what a game this is will we have a winner though we're ticking into stoppage time here Chelsea two ten man Burnley two Timo Werner with a cross right across the face of goal loops up behind for a goal kick for Luton Town all of a sudden Kaminsky is putting his skates on to get the ball back of course uh, all the balls are placed on cones around the perimeter of the pitch ball boys can no longer ball boys and girls can no longer return them to the players that was a new directive announced yesterday so Kaminsky had to race down to about the corner flag to get the ball back in play it's with his opposite number Vicario now we've played three of the nine added minutes it's still Tottenham 2, Luton 1 on Talk Sport. Luton bottom of the form table coming into this game. That isn't going to change unless they can come up with a late equaliser. Again, they led for much of the first half and were on level terms until four minutes from the end of the 90 when Son popped up with that deflected goal. It's been another heroic effort given the number of players that Rob Edwards doesn't have to choose 
but looks like they're going to fall just short again but he's down to their bare bones aren't they Lute and Crookie you said there they've got like 10 injuries and they haven't got the greatest squad, squad depth anyway and a, a team like Luton can't afford to have you know their senior players out because we're looking even now in their back four which is a surprise you've got Hashioko going in there playing as a, a centre half and doing a decent job oh Mengi has slapped his clearance straight against Johnson Richarlison into the penalty area Mengi has made amends with a brilliantly timed slide tackle had he have got that wrong it would have been a penalty and probably a red card as well really good defending from Mengi and Luton now have a free kick after Ross Barkley was brought down by Lo Celso. Doesn't get any easier for Luton after this. Looking at the games they have to play. They only play one team who started the weekend in the bottom seven in their final seven matches. I mean, it's um, Arsenal on Wednesday night, isn't it, at the Emirates? You'll be pleased with that. Well, after we beat Man City tomorrow, then obviously we'll be flying. Of course, uh, Perry will be part of the Sunday session. Myself and Adrian at the Etihad. As City take on Arsenal. Here's Destiny Udogi. Racing away down the left for Tottenham. 96 on the clock. Spurs lead by two goals to one. And you just can't envisage a situation where Luton have the energy to come up with a late sting in this tail Benton Kerr though has given away a cheek free kick inside the centre circle for a foul on Clark and it's a yellow card as well for Rodrigo Benton Kerr I think for kicking the ball away yeah Hoyerberg I think he picked up a yellow card earlier as well just for a bit of dissent because he thought that Richarlison should have had a penalty when obviously Mengi gave the ball away and it was a good sliding tackle to recover but now obviously Luton will just try and load the ball into the box Ross Barkley take the free kick in the centre circle chips it towards the left corner of the penalty area but Morris has been penalised for a foul that will do as far as Tottenham are concerned the chance to eke away a few more valuable seconds just get back to the city ground if Forrest were to come up with a late winner that would really compound Luton's misery any sign of it Jeff Peters still Forest one Palace one deep into stoppage time not long left here it looks like it's going to be honours even it's Forest one Palace one and that would still be a precious point for Forest and one that would take them above Luton Town out of the bottom three on goal difference Everton just three points clear of the drop zone and of course both Forest and Everton have had points deducted Everton may well have more points deducted between now and the end of the season but psychologically Perry how, how big a blow if Luton do end the day in the bottom three yeah, having led here for so long well at half time Crookie they were four from bottom weren't they four points ahead of Nottingham Forest so Nottingham Forest now have leapfrogged them I think Rob Edwards would be really really proud of the effort that his Luton team have put in because he said they're bound down to their bare bones he changed the tactics where he went man for man but you can bet your life Luton will be absolutely shattered at the end of the game because they've put a lot of mileage in here's Kabore though plenty of black shirts in the centre Kabore with a deep cross to the far post they almost got in each other's way the Luton players as they try to lay it off from Panzu Johnson was there to clear and that may well be the last chance of an equaliser. The full-time whistle's gone at the Vitality. Everton beaten 2-1 by Bournemouth. 12 Premier League games now without a win for the Toffees. And it's also all over at the City Ground. Forest, as it stands, will be out of the bottom three. They've come from behind to draw 1-1 at home to Crystal Palace. Perry Groves. Oh, chops and changes, doesn't it? Crookie in the uh, Premier League. And it's uh, been a brilliant day for Spurs as well. Obviously, jumping above Aston Villa, getting themselves into that fourth position on goal difference. Well, of course, that could change when Villa take on Wolves later. But certainly Tottenham have laid down the gauntlet as it stands because we've got 40 seconds to go. Hoybier brought on just to try and take the edge out of this game. Runs towards the right corner flag. Then they play it back to Benton Kerr and now Romero. 
And Pedro Porro, 10 yards inside the Luton half. If Tottenham can just keep the ball for 20 seconds, they're going to win the game. Given away by Johnson, but one back by Romero, who just punts it towards the penalty area. Could be an awkward one, this, for Mengen. He's wrapped his arms around Richarlison, and he's given away a brainless free kick. And that will be that, as far as Luton Town are concerned. That was just frustration there from Mengi. Richarlison did really well. Just the ball helped into the right-hand channel. And there will not even be time for the free kick to be taken. Tottenham Hotspur once again have put their fans through the ring of this afternoon. They've come from behind to claim three precious points and put another dagger in Luton's hopes of staying in the Premier League. The Hatters took the lead as early as the third minute through Tahi Chong at the end of a rapid counter-attack. It took until six minutes into the second half for Spurs to get back on level terms when Issa Bore turned a Johnson cross into his own net and they held out Luton for what would have been a priceless point until four minutes from the end. Son, the captain, with his 15th goal of the season, a heavily deflected winner. Spurs go level on points with Villa in fourth place. Luton drop into the bottom three. It finishes here. Tottenham two, Luton one.